Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Illustrator for Noobs and today we're just going to finish off this design, add the text over here and then just round off the corners and put in a vignette as well. Um, quite a lot to get on with this um, episode so let's just get on with it. Um, since last time what I did is I just basically rotated some of these a little bit so that all the cogs weren't all facing the same way so there's just a bit more interest there. Just change the gradient just to make sure that this goes from here to here again um, and then I've made sure that they all have their drop shadows. I've added a little ring there as well. Um, just one more double ring to put in here so if we go select go to the ellipse tool um, it's just going to be a stroke so I don't need a fill there and then let's just go and hold down shift make sure it's a full circle and here's our first one and then you can see illustrator when you hover over the center it shows you that's exactly where it is drag again hold shift alt like we did before and then you get a concentric ring as well something like that's fine um, I think for the fur, the outside one, I want it slightly wider and this one a little bit more. So I'll just go um, short keyboard shortcut to get the selection tool V and then go to stroke, make it two, and let's make this one double that. So we'll go and make it four. Right, let me just select both of these so I can show you. There, just move it over to the right so we can have a look at it in detail. Right. You know what? Let's just make it white so you can really see it. Now, you can see a red line inside each one of these, right in the middle. That means it's a stroke. It's an editable stroke, meaning that you haven't actually converted it into a vector or into an object yet. So you can keep changing the stroke size and so on, but there's not much else you can do. So if you select them both, um, go to Object, Expand. Expand means that you're going to convert them from strokes or anything from, convert them all into a vector, into objects. Um, they're just strokes so we don't need the fill and then just go OK. So now you can see when you click on each one there's a red line on the outside edge. So these are now objects. Um, I'm just going to group them, Command G to group them so that two of them can be moved very easily. We'll pop them back over here and then change the colour now back to the original gradient and it was on stroke so <laughs> I'm going to have to change that. Okay there we go because it's no longer a stroke it's a fill because they're objects. Um, maybe a little bit bigger, just a teeny bit bigger something like that. These are above, so they're up here. What I do is just highlight that, hold down the mouse, drag and put it just above the black background and that looks a lot better now, it's not in the way. Um, next thing we need to do is just do the text. So T for type or text and then keyboard shortcut is just T. Um, I've made it 50 points just so you can see it. Just click on it and then just type um, I've chosen Alien Encounters Solid. Sorry, aeroplane going past. There's just every noise that's happening outside is happening today. Um, I'll go on to select the V. You always end up with this really weird box around um, fonts when, the, when you're using text and it's still in the sort of, it hasn't been expanded yet. Um, so at the moment I can change it into anything. It's fully editable. So you can see it's changed to um, another font. Let's just take it back to how it was, to regular. So you can keep changing that and you can keep changing the size of how many pixels the actual font is and the text. Um, but there's not much else you can do. So you need to change them into an object in order for it to become a proper vector. So what you do in this case is you go to type, create, outlines and straight away you can see it's the same with what happened with these with the strokes they have now become 
individual objects. So now, Illustrator doesn't see them as being alien encounters, solid font text, but actually shapes and objects that are editable and you can add gradients and stuff like that, but you can't change the font. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, if you wanted to, you could go in, you see, I, I'm, I think the E is a bit too much to the right, so you can just use the direct selection tool, the white arrow, and then just make it move over, shift and move to the left, just one. So you can still move them within the group, but just make sure you use the white arrow. Um, Okay, so what we want to do now is to give it a gradient. So we go to our swatches. We wanted the yellow gradient. Um, you'll notice straight away, because each one of these is a separate font, when you're putting um, a vertical gradient, um, it'll treat each one of these as a separate object, so it'll go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, which is fine if you want it to have that sort of effect. But really, quite often, you just want it across all of them. So what you have to do is you've selected it, you've collect, selected the full group, you go to Object, Compound Path, Make. So what happens now is it's become one shape. It's no longer a group of separate objects. And every time you do that, it always seems to just take away all the fill and color. So we're back to the original gradient we chose. And as you can see, it's gone from light yellow to darker yellow um, all in one but this we want to have it going from light to dark vertically so we'll click the gradient change it make sure that the fill is above hold down shift to make sure that it's completely vertical and there you have our text we want to give it a um, black outline as well Somehow it seemed to be suitable in this case. Quite often I don't really like using outlines, but in this case it was more, it just gave it a bit more of a visual impact. Um, I also want to make sure that it's got a drop shadow, stylized drop shadow, go for default, OK. So here we are. We're getting there. Just want to make it slightly bigger. Hold down shift to make sure that it's. Um, in proportion. So we're nearly there. What we do want to do though is we want to give it a vignette. So I'll just go and pick another um, rectangle. 400 by 400, exactly the same as the artboard. Okay. And then a line, a line. I've made sure it's aligned to artboard. And then I'm going to go swatches. By default, it quite often has the super soft black vignette. Um, sorry, there we go. Make sure it's the fill, not the stroke. Um, the vignette you can get in gradients. If you go down to your swatches, you'll find it in gradients. And then go to vignettes there. There's a whole load of them. As you can see them. It's worth experimenting with all the different effects there. But this is the one that we wanted, just a soft vignette. Um, now the one thing we do want to do in order to finish it off is to make sure it's got rounded corners. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the text is above. Now there's so many different compound, pa compound paths and it's quite easy to forget um, which is which. So if you double click on, e on each um, what's the word, thing, <laughs> each one within a layer, um, you can double click and change the name of it. So I can just go text and then just OK. So then I don't get mixed up. I'm sorry if I'm mumbling a little bit this week. I'm really, really tired. It's just been one of those very difficult last weeks. Um, so I really hope I'm being a bit coherent today, but forgive me. Um, OK, I'm going to make sure that the text is above the vignette and the rest of it. I'm just going to lock it to make sure that it doesn't move for now. Um, now, what we want to do is to make it have rounded corners just like the other one. So, um, what you do is you've got the vignette on top and then what you're going to do is create sort of like um, a, a what we call a clipping mask. So I'm going to go 
rounded rectangle tool, click there, 400 by 400 with a corner radius of 30. Hit OK. Doesn't really matter what that is, what the fill is at the moment. Slap it on top so that's the path there, the new one that we've made. I'm just going to make sure that it's not, um, that it's above the I'm unable to speak and I'm really sorry I'm not thinking straight at all. This is, we want it above everything else. Okay, I'll just drop that below. There we go. So this is the rounded rectangle. What we want to do is create a clipping mark. So we select everything apart from the text. And then we go to Object, Clipping Mask, make or command 7 and now you can see straight away what's happened is that the rounded rectangle has clipped so whatever the rounded rectangle went over it's just it makes the rest of it um, not show so just to give you an idea if I click just on the clipping mask itself I can actually move it, can you see it only, sh it clips what it's done, let me just remove the layer below, can you see? Ah, you can see it will, it will just cut off whatever else is outside of that shape, so let's just align it back again, there we go, can you see that? And actually, looking at the text again, I just wanted it a slightly warmer um, yellow. So let's just go back to gradients. Start off here. And I wanted the slightly warmer. Ah, oh, that's better. That's much better. Ah, oh, yes. Um, so there, you can see we've made a clipping mask, and clipping mask will exclude everything outside of it. It's completely editable, and it's really handy. Well, I'll be using clipping mask in so many things. It's really, really good fun to use, and it gives you that much more of a dimension than what you're working on. And there we go. That's more or less the finished piece. Next week, or next episode, I'm going to show you how to export them and convert them from an Adobe Illustrator file into all the other file formats you want. So until then, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below, and I'll see you next episode. Peace and love. Goodbye.